I would now like to introduce Sam Biondo, National Technical Presenter from APE Corporation. Sam has over 25 years of international installation experience in the flooring industry. As a speaker at many industry functions, Sam's installation expertise helps his audiences easily comprehend new innovative technologies and their applications. So without further ado, Sam, you're on. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody in attendance. I can't see you, but I can feel you. So thank you very much for attending. I promise you, your time will not be wasted. I know how valuable time is. So without further ado, let's get started. I want to welcome everyone to the MAPE Technical Institute, because that, in essence, is where you're at. Um, today, we're going to talk about the Registered Pro Installer Training. Uh, now, in today's session, at the end, you will become a Registered Pro Installer and be eligible for the following exclusive programs. You're going to be recognized as an expert in a radiant floor heating business. There's added warranty benefits, which include labor, the 25-year product and lifetime product system warranties. This enhanced warranty protection is in the form of allowance for floor materials and labor costs, should a valid claim be made using either the 25-year or the lifetime systems warranty. You'll also be listed on MaPay's Find a Pro Installer website directory, and you'll receive exclusive offers and loyalty benefits. Now, if you have any questions during this session, please enter them into the chat feature, and we will absolutely be sure to address them at the end. Let's get started. MAPA Pro Installer Installation Guidelines. These are some do's and don'ts. These are extremely, extremely, extremely important to pay attention to. I'm going to tell you these guidelines in the front, and I'm going to tell you at the back end. That's how important they are. So pay attention. Number one, do not under any terms energize the MAPA heat cable while it's on the spool. I need you to think about this for a second. I've got cable that heats up and it lays on the floor, it's buried under mortar and it heats my floor up. Now take it and stack it up on top of each other in a spool tightly wound. That could really be an ugly situation. Next thing, the hot section of the flooring cable, it must be installed under the hot section, the red section. It must be installed entirely below the finished flooring. The minimum bending radius of the cold lead, the black part is two inches. And the heating wire, the red part, is five eighths of an inch. The MAPA heat cable should be connected to a dedicated electrical circuit. If tiles being installed on top of the finished flooring, do not use a sharp tool to clean it out. You're gonna go ahead and put take all this time to put in the work, to put in the cable, then put down ceramic tile, put mortar on the floor, put the tile into it, get it all good to go, come back the next day with a grout cleaning tool, dig it out and put a nick in the cable, and now you gotta rip part of the tile out to repair the cable, that's not a smart idea. Secure the tip of the temperature probe to the membrane using either duct tape or hot glue. Ensure the probe is installed a minimum of 12 inches in the heated area and is centered between two runs of the heating cable. Moppy heat cable should not be installed closer than six inches from the center of the toilet drain or under the footing of the toilet. Moppy heat cable may be installed one to six inches away from the walls or fixed furniture. Never, ever, ever, one more time for those who didn't pay attention, never, ever, ever cut, shorten, or modify the heating cables in any way, shape, or form. Never use a cable designed for 110 on a 220. Or, uh, or 120 on a, on, a, on a 240. It's just not gonna work. Never allow a cable to overlap or cross themselves. Do not install solid hardwood flooring over a MAPA heat system. Do not install solid hardwood flooring over top of a MAPA heat system. Please do not use commercial applications. Um, residential multifamily is acceptable. Do not lay heating cables under cabinets, appliances, or permanently mounted furniture, like wall units and like built-ins and things like that. Do not extend MAPA heat cables beyond the room or area in which it originates. Do not use over plank floor, wood flooring, press board, particle board, chip board, pressure oil treated plywood, Luan, masonite, self-stick tile, laminate, metal, fiberglass, or similar dimensionally unstable materials. 
follow the insulation test and resistance guidelines and record them in the testing log. And of course, I don't know why, but I have to say this, of course, do not install over any highly flammable material. A uh, heating cable over flammable material. Yeah, you kind of get the picture. This equipment must be installed by qualified personnel who are familiar with the construction and the operation of the apparatus and the product and understand the risks involved. Only a professional contractor, dial or electrical, should install cable onto the subfloor. Only a licensed electrician should connect the system to the household wiring and perform all electrical connections according to local national building codes and norms. So now that we got through that, let's talk about the thermostats. We have three of them. First thermostat we're gonna talk about is the Mapa Heat Thermal Basic. I think the last name on the name of it, last word on the name of this pretty much self-describes this. Mapa Heat Thermal, that's right, I heard some of you say it, basic. Um, it offers a simplified functionality for ease of use. It's pretty simple. It's on, off, and up and down controls. I want to raise the temperature, I raise the temperature. I want to lower the temperature, I lower the temperature. I want to turn it on, I turn it on, I want to turn it off, I turn it off. Next one is the Mapa Heat Thermo Touch. Again, I think the name explains it. Now, it's a touch screen. It's a 3.5 color touch screen. It energy monitor use, senses floor and ambient temperature, seven day programmable with a built in on and off switch. It's pretty cool. I can program my, uh, my thermostat in my house and have it ready to go. I'm good to go. But the last one is Mapa Heat Thermo Connect. The Thermal Connect works with popular smart home systems such as Google Home, Amazon Alexa. With the free Mapa Heat smartphone app for iOS and Android, you can remotely monitor control the programs on the Mapa Heat Thermal Connect thermostat. So it's exactly like the thermostat before, the Mapa Heat Thermo Touch, only this one when you download. Now, when you download the app, allows you to control this A from your car, from your phone while driving down the road. This is a brilliant idea. You're driving home, you realize you wanna turn the heat up, you wanna turn the heat down, you can do this. Again, it has a 3.5 color touch screen, um, displays current and forecasted weather, so you can see when a cold front's coming in or going away um, through your warranty, and it can be used with a 120 or 240 volt. Selecting the Mapa Heat system. There are four heating systems available. There's the Mapa Heat membrane, the Mapa Heat mat, the Mapa Heat cable guides, and the Mapa Heat mesh. So we'll go back to the membrane. The membrane is on site adjustable. What that means is it's an independent roll of membrane or it comes in sheets. And I can go ahead and pre cut it before I put any mortar down to, shit, to fit the shape of any bathroom at all. I don't care what it looks like. I can go ahead and get it all cut into place and make it fit that bathroom or that, or that space. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bathroom. Um, it's a quick and easy way to install the floor. It also replaces a layer of backer board or plywood substrate. Um, there's some other features and benefits we'll go over in a, in a minute. The Mapa Heat Mat. These are custom mats that are made to measure. 70 of them are standard size mats that we have on a shelf. You just order them. But you can also have a custom mat made um, they're easy and error free. I don't have to do any cutting on a job site. The mat comes out, I just go ahead and install it. The cable is, is perfectly spaced in between there because it's done at a factory. The Mapa Heat cable guide system. These are cable guides I put on the perimeter of the room and then I stretch the cable going across there. Um, this comes in 33 cable size kits and they're available right off the shelf and the Mapa Heat Mesh. There are 10 mesh kits available from 12 to 240 square feet. Um, there's a mesh with the cable embedded in the mesh in a serpentine uh, configuration. When I, I just roll the mesh out, when I get to the end of the wall, I cut across the mesh, not the cable. One more time, we don't cut the cable. 
we cut the mesh, no cutting the cable, we cut the mesh and then rotate it back around and have it come back this way in the room till I get to the end of the wall. And again, cut the, that's right, the mesh, not the cable and rotate it back. It's pretty interesting. We'll cover all the install techniques and application techniques in, in the next couple of slides right here. So those are the four that are available. Let's talk about Mapa Heat membrane and Mapa Heat cable. So I'm gonna purchase the membrane and I'm gonna purchase the cable separate. Now the Mapa Heat membrane is, serves as an uncoupling membrane. It can serve as a vapor management system because it's a plastic um, membrane, um, has a patent design which enables air pockets to form between the subfloor and the membrane, allowing excess moisture to escape the substrate. Um, it, it can double as a waterproof membrane. Um, by sealing off the seams and up the sides of it, I can waterproof the floor and it has load distribution. Uh, the pillars in there help distribute loads all the way up to an extra heavy rating on the Robinson floor testing machine. Before I put the Mapa heat membrane down, surface prep, surface prep, surface prep. We need to clean the floor. How are we going to adhere this membrane to the floor? We're going to use a mortar. So this needs to follow the same standards that you would be if you were putting down ceramic tile. I need to be able to have that mortar penetrate that substrate and bond to the back of the scrim on the membrane. So I need to sweep and vacuum the floor. I need to check it to make sure that, that I have porosity, that water absorbs down in it. If it doesn't, I need to figure out what I'm going to do about it or I need to find out why that's happening. Remember, clean, dry, free of dust, dirt, oil, grease, paint, wax, soap, and any substance, any substance at all that may prevent, reduce, or affect adhesion or performance of the mortar that is selected for your application. Any mortar that meets ANSI 118.4 and 118.11 and 118.15 is a really good choice. Now, I like the modern mortars that we have. And when I say that, I'm talking the LFTs, the Caraflex mortars, because they have a range of water where some of the older mortars that we have that are very good, the range is smaller. And I want to mix everything to the wetter side so I can penetrate the scrim on the back of the membrane. So I really like my, me some Caraflex Super in this application. It spreads fantastic. It penetrates the back really easy and it just makes for a really good in, uh, insulation. Remember, you need to pre-cut and dry fit the membrane first before you go ahead and you apply or install the membrane on top of it. Here's a quick video. Um, this is Chad and Barry. Um, we sped this up a little bit, but they're, they're going to go ahead and show you about spreading the membrane. There's a couple of key points in here I'm going to point out while they're going ahead and doing it. First things first, they've already pre-cut the sheets, and now they're mixing the mortar up and they're putting the mortar down. So let's see if we can get this to play here. Now, first things first, if Barry could work that fast, um, he would have never gotten off of his knees. Uh, well, he would have. He would have retired already by now. But um, one of the things, I'm going to stop it, one of the things that's important is what Barry did, and this is just ex-installer who no, just kind of knows, when he put the sheet up against the wall to dry fit it and get it in place, he drew a pencil line along the edge. When I'm spreading that mortar, I want to pull the mortar a little bit past the pencil line, and I'll show you why in a minute. So Barry's spreading the mortar across there and he's pulling the mortar past the edge of the pencil line. Now Barry and Chad are now going to put that mat down. Okay. So now by him doing that, when he goes and puts the next piece in, he doesn't have to spread mortar right up against that edge and getting mud all over top on, on top of the mat. Um, it creates for a clean installation. You're not touching the back or the edge of the mat where the two pieces are, where the seam is going to be. And again, if you're going to if you're going to continue putting pieces down, you keep spreading past the line. Now, if this is the last piece you're going to put in, you spread only up to the line. So, this is just uh installer and you know, installer experience to know how to do this and to know to do it. 
Next thing is those pillars, the rows of those pillars need to line up. So when I run that cable up and down, then I wanna make sure that that cable is not askew at all. It's running up and down. So you wanna align the pillars up. You wanna roll the floor out. There's lots of ways of rolling the floor out. So one more time, I wanna pre-cut pre, pre and dry fit the membrane in place prior to, to installing the mortar on the substrate. Next thing, I wanna flat trowel the mortar down. Of course, I, this substrate needs to be dry, flat, and clean. I wanna flat trowel the mortar into the substrate. Then I wanna comb the mortar in place. I wanna roll out or, or install the, um, the membrane, and then I wanna spread my mortar on top and set my tile. Now, the MAPA heat membrane and cable installation, there are three MAPA heat cable kit layouts allowing for three ways to warm the floor, with two of these being able to warm the room in the space up above. So the first one is a 333 cable layout. Um, this is a low output and it basically warms the tile at 10 watts per square feet. It's really not recommended for colder climates. Um, some of you might be surprised, but there is some interest here in South Florida um, people would like um, this floor in their bathroom. So when they get out of the shower in the morning, the floor is a little chilly on their feet. They just want to warm the floor a little bit. Um, the 232 cable layout, which means I go two pillars over, three pillars, two pillars, three pillars, two pillars, three pillars, you get the point, is a standard output, output, and it allows the system to provide about 12 watts per square foot, which warms the tile and helps to warm the room space to about 41 BTUs per square foot. And then the Mac Daddy of heating the room is a 222 cable layout, which is a high output, produces 15 watts per square feet with around 51 BTUs per square foot of heated room space. Now for perspective, a baseboard heater averages around 34 BTUs per, per square foot. So at 41 BTUs in the 232 configuration and 51 in the 222 configuration, both of these work great at warming the space up above. Now, how is that possible? Well, I, don't, I think the basic understanding of how heat works, hot air rises. So if I have a consistent stream going all the way across the floor and this heat is rising up, the whole room gets heated up. When installing over a concrete slab, a thermal break may be needed to help reflect the heat into above, up into the above floor and the room space. This is perfect for colder climates. Installing a thermal break or a thermal barrier helps keep the energy conduction focused upward towards the floor and not downward towards the concrete down below or the subfloor down below. A thermal break is an insulating layer that is placed above a concrete slab or unheated space and is below the floor heating system to improve the heating performance. Mapasan RM10 was tested and received an R value of 0.8, which is good to go and is approved to be used as a thermal barrier or a thermal break prior to installing. So this is another product that can be added onto it that will help radiate that heat upward, especially in colder climates. The cable systems can be linked to each other using different size cable kits to cover larger square foot installation and configurations. However, they must be linked in parallel and not in a daisy chain. Just gonna let that marinate for a minute. So what, in other words, what I'm saying is I don't wanna take the end of one cable and then tie another cable onto the end of it and make one giant long cable. In parallel, all the cold leads need to come up to one spot and tie into the thermostat, as long as the amperage draw does not exceed 15 amps. And the cable kits combined must be the same voltage. I can't have 120 volt and a 240 volt. It's either 120 or 240. So you're like, well, how do I know if they're going to exceed 15 amps? Fantastic question. We're gonna cover that in a minute. The MAPA heat cave membrane can replace substrate layers such as backer board. MAPA heat membrane is rated extra heavy. The cold lead splice and thermostat probes fit in between the space of the pillars on the membrane. Some other products require cutting or modification. Uh, the cold lead and the membrane length is 10 feet. You have 10 feet to figure this thing out, which direction you're going to go and how you're going to go. So when I have multiple cables, the first one might run all the way down the perimeter of the outside into the back of a room. 
and then the next cable comes up and fills up and then the last cable that's the furthest away comes up and fills up the closest row it's up to you and i leave this up to installers and professionals once you've installed the mopper heat membrane, you can install the selected cable. Over 30 kit, uh, kit sizes are available. The largest is 120, covers 120 square feet. The heating cables come equipped with a midpoint marker. This is pretty cool. So halfway through of the spool on the cable, it's gonna say how you're halfway. This gives you a chance to like, uh-oh, well, maybe I need to shorten my runs or do this. Um, it allows you to plan better that way. There are multiple options for your heat based on the cable spacing selected, the 232, the 333, or the 222. Remember, do not alter the or cut the cold lead in any way, shape, or form. On this chart, this is going to help you figure out a couple of different things. It's A, gonna fig to help you figure out what cable length you need. So let's just say I'm gonna do my bathroom and it's 65 square feet. You see the highlighted um, um, 60 square feet, and it's under the 232 pillar spacing column. You want to go to the square footage below what your square what your square foot is. So if I'm 65 square feet, I want to go to the 60 square foot one. I slide across one, two, three, and you go up, and it says cable amps. And so this this one right here which covers 60 square feet is going to use six amps and it's going to give me 234 lineal feet of cable so now if i'm going to link another cable onto it i have six amps i'm allowed up to 15 i can go up to 11 amps on the next cable to link two of them together to one thermostat because i can't go over 15 right that's right i saw you nod your head um if let's just say, for instance, in my 65 square foot bathroom, I'm going to go with a 222 configuration. So you see the highlighted 60 square foot one under the 232. You slide straight over to your right. You're at 49. Nope. You go down one at 55. Nope. We go uh, down one to 66. Nope. Because that's one square foot further than 65. So we go back to the 55 one. And that's the system, that's the cable length that I want. Make sense? And we have it for the 240, the exact same thing. So if you want a 333 spacing, you figure out how many square feet you have, and then you follow across. If you need to link more than one, you go ahead and you check the amps. It's on this list right here, and that'll tell you, and you can't exceed 50 amps. Now, this is something that must happen every single time, must do before, during, and after every single installation. First things first, you need a multimeter with alligator clips or equivalent testing device. You wanna place the probe on one of the clips. Place the other probe on the other side. Confirm the ohm reading is within plus 10 or minus 5% of the factory reading listed on the cold lead tag. You see this tag right here? You must never take that tag off. This tag must stay on there. If you look carefully on this tag, it'll tell you from the factory that this had 103.4 ohms. Now you look at your reading when you look at your own with your at your multimeter, and you could either be plus 10% or minus 5% of the of that reading right there. Then you need to record that in the table. You find that in your handbook. And the handbook is found with the cable is found in the box of cable. Um, with the mesh and with the with the mesh, um, it's found in the box. Must do before, during, and after installation to the ensure that the cable wire is fully insulated. You want to go ahead and check the metal braid. So I I go ahead and I clip one of the ends on of the of my multimeter onto the metal braid, and I click the other end onto one of the wires. Confirm that I have an OL or an infinity or an open circuit. I want to repeat the steps to check the readings between the metal braid wires on the black and the white wire. By the way, there'll be a video on Brad and 
are Barry and Chad. I just combined the two. I made them one. <laughs> Barry and Chad or have a video showing us how to do this at the end. We'll show it then. I want to record this stuff because this is important for my warranty. So I find the cable in the cable handbook comes in the box with the cable in the mat it comes in the box with the mat and in the mesh it comes in the box with the mesh but also i can go online and i can find this under related documents under the mapa heat cable under related documents and then you can see where i have it highlighted underneath there mapa heat cable insulation handbook and that's where I can record these readings. So I can get it off a of line, plus I'm gonna have a physical copy of our physical book to have in my hand that comes with the kits. And this is what it looks like. So one more time, and this is important, when I'm going ahead and putting in those, uh, the, 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 the uh, membrane, I wanna make sure that the columns line up or the pillars line up on the membrane so i might have to cut a piece off to start the next one it's not as simple as cutting the end and just pushing it up against the wall and starting over again in essence there's a pattern that i have to match the pattern is i have to maintain that row all the way across and this is another video of barry and chad installing the cable now they're not in fast motion i don't believe now, this is interesting because um, lots of people have lots of have told me lots of different ways that they go ahead and make sure. But it's very important that you make sure that cable is below the surface of those pillars, because when I'm using a trowel to put down my mortar on top, I don't want to nick that cable. By the way, I'm going to check this cable before, during and after with the multimeter. And when I'm not doing that, it's going to be hooked up to my sensor to see my fault sensor, to see if there's anything that's happening. If, there, if I get a sound out of my fault sensor, if I get a sound out of my fault sensor, that tells me I might have nicked the cable during the installation. Stop and take a look at it and get it fixed right now. And there are repair kits, and we'll cover that in a little bit. So this is a 232 configuration is what we're looking at here. Oh, that doesn't look right. Ah, there we go. Now, you notice Barry's using a wood float to push down the cable. I've seen people use grout floats. I've actually seen a wheel. Um, that right there is the midway tag. I've seen people with a wheel, uh, like a spline for a screen spline. Um, all of those things are viable and they, they all absolutely will work as long as you get that cable pushed down below. If in this case, you can see that's the seam right there and some mortar pushed up in between there. You want to make sure you clean that out pretty good. Um, get it cleaned up before it all dries and gets hard. And not you won't, you won't be able to put the cable back in. All right, let's talk about the Mapa Heat mat. This is a pre-built mat solution. Um, it's pre-wired, so it comes from the factory pre-wired. You're gonna get consistent heat produced out of that mat. With factory installed wire spacing, there are definitely no cold spots anywhere. It does not require any on-site manipulation. It's an eighth of an inch thick, which is ideal for installations where minimum floor buildup is desired. Mapa Heat mat is available in more than 70 standard sizes right off the shelf. But if you need customizable sizes, they're also available. Once your dimensions are submitted, there's about three business days to manufacture the mat. From beginning to end, it's about a two-week process, from what I understand, to get your mat. So prior to installing it, as always, make sure the substrate is clean. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sweep the substrate. Then I'm going to flat trowel down the mortar. Then I'm going to go ahead and use a notch trowel on the mortar. I'm going to roll my mat on top. I'm gonna then put my press down the mat or roll the mat out. Then I'm gonna come on top, flat trowel it and put a notch in it and set my tile on top. Um, I, I, I need to wanna take the interior room dimensions and this will help me select the proper mat, um, pre-made mat for the kit if everything is square like this one is. However, if I have a, a, an area that it isn't square that looks kind of like this one, I'm gonna go with the custom 
matte configuration. Now it's important when you make a drawing, and you'll see here in this picture right here, um, that if you go to if you go to uh, um, MAPE website under MAPE Heat Technical Documents section, you'll be able to download this um, this grid right here that you can go ahead and draw your mat, your your custom mat on. And this is what it would look like. You're going to draw the entire room. You're going to draw where the tub is at and where the shower is at. We're not putting any uh, electrical heat in those two things. And then you're going to pick a corner and you're going to go from corner to corner to corner to corner with the with the measurements. In this case, we're using inches. So in the upper right hand left hand corner, from straight down is 75 inches. Then we're going to make a right. That's 60 inches. Seven inches up, 30 inches down, five inches down, 25 across, 38 down. You want to mark where the toilet drain is at. And the reason for that is we'll build it into the mat, just like this one right here that you see up on the left. You can see that the toilet drain is built into there and that none of the wires within six feet of the center of that drain or six inches of the center of that drain. This is important. The other thing you want to note is you want to note where you plan on hooking this up to the wall. So you want to show where that's going to happen at because that they need to know where the electrical where, they, where to go ahead and put the cold lead and the hot lead as it's coming out. Mop heat cable guide systems and cables. This is an installation overview. This is kind of simple. Um, a, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the substrate. I'm gonna prime that substrate because we're gonna pour self-leveler. And as all of you know, I'm sure, but you just need to be a quick reminded, you always use primer when you pour self-leveler. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down the cable guide, I'm gonna sweep the floor, I'm gonna prime the floor, then I'm gonna put down the cable guide, then I'm gonna string and lay the cable out across, then I'm gonna go ahead and pour my leveler on top, and then I'm gonna go ahead flat trowel down and notch the floor to put down my tile or whatever flooring I'm gonna put on top of that. A um, Couple of things is you wanna identify where the thermostat is at, um, you want to string the heating cable in the, in the configuration of a 222, a 232, or a 333, depending upon how much heat do you want to generate. Um, the cool thing I like about this system is you definitely want to use the stabilizing cable guides in the middle so the cables don't get wonky when you pour the leveler. They stay nice and straight and even from one end of the room to the next. And be conscientious of the toilet and the, the center of the toilet drain. The Mapa Heat Mesh, um, this is an interesting system. Um, it's an ultra thin mat also, a minimal effect on floor height. Um, comes in 10 sizes, uh, the largest covering 120 square feet. Here's our chart, it goes from 12, I, I, it, the, um, the coverages go from 12 to 85 in this case. And on this chart, they're 20 inches wide, and it tells you that the amp. So these are for like smaller options. I want to go ahead, prime the floor first, sweep it, get it clean, prime it, roll out the mesh with the adhesive side down, cut and turn it as I get to fit the room shape. Do not cut the cable, you only cut the mesh. Once that's secured, it'll stick to the floor, mix up my leveler, pour my leveler on top and install my finished floor on top of that. Mop of heat accessories. The mop of heat fault sensor is an electrical fault indicator simultaneously monitors the hot neutral and ground wires in the mop of heat system while you're putting it in. I attach, I attach one of the wires to the ends, the two loads. I take the ground, the braided one, that's my ground. Put that in the center. I turn the probe on. Oh, probe doesn't want to go on. I turn the probe on. When one of these wires fault, it will leave it will make a noise and you'll see a light blinking. So if during the process, while this is connected to my, I, that noise comes up, you kind of know which one, and you know that you have an issue. Very important. If you do nickel wire, 
There's a Mapa Heat repair kit um, and a Mapa Heat cable repair kit. So Mapa mat repair kit and a Mapa cable repair kit. Um, make sure you pick up the phone, call technical services. We can get you in contact about where it's at to get it to you and what your situation is. Um, Testing procedures are required and must be logged in the Mapa Heat Installation Handbook for warranty registrations. Make sure the warranty, which is a critical part of your proposition, make sure you take 15 minutes to complete the online registration within 30 days of installation at www.mapaheatwarranties.com. Once you have completed your Mapa Heat Pro Installer training, you will receive a Mapa Heat Pro Installer number. Enter that pro number to qualify for the added labor benefits and the warranties. The homeowner, the contractor should keep copies of the test reports, the relevant invoices, and installation photographs and sketches. MAPE recognizes new heat certified pros as in qualified installers when they opt into the, MAP, the MAPE program. Remember, MAPE heat pro installers they're recognized as experts in the radiant floor heating business, are given added warranty benefits, are listed on MAPE's Find a Pro Installer website directory, and they receive exclusive offers and loyalty benefits. And again, I'm going to go over this one more time. Do not energize the MAPE heat cable while it's on the spool. Could be problems. The hot section of the cable, it must be buried completely underneath the finished floor. Minimum bending radius of the cold lead, two inches and the heating wire is five eighths of an inch. Mapa heat cables should be connected to a dedicated electrical circuit. If tiles being installed, make sure when you're cleaning it out, you don't use a sharp tool in the grout joints and you, and you wind up nicking the wire. Secure the tip of the temperature probe using duct tape or hot glue. Ensure the probe is installed 12 inches in the heated area and is centered between two runs of the heating cable. Mopping heat cable should not be installed closer than six inches from the center of the toilet drain. Mopping heat cable may be installed up to one to six inches away from walls or fixed furniture. Never, ever, ever cut and shorten or modify the heating cables in any way, shape. Do not use cables designed for 110 on a 220 system. Seriously? Um, never allow cables to overlap or cross themselves. Do not install solid hardwood flooring over top of Mapa heat system. Do not install solid hardwood flooring over top of a Mapa heat system. Don't do not use in a commercial application. Multifamily residential is acceptable. Do not lay heating cables under cabinets or appliances or permanently mounted furniture. Do not extend Mapa heat cables beyond the room or the area in which it originates. Do not use over. Plank wood flooring, press wood, particle board, chipboard, pressure oil treated plywood, lawn, masonite, self stick tile, laminate, metal, fiberglass, or similar dimensionally unstable materials. Follow the insulation test and resistance guidelines and make sure you record them in the testing log in the installation handbook. And of course, do not install over highly flammable material. This equipment must be installed by qualified personnel. Only professional contractors, tile or electrical, should install cable onto the subfloor. Only a licensed electrician should connect the system to the household wiring, perform all electrical connections according to local national building code standards and norms. Let's take a look at Barry and Chad testing, shall we? Now, Chad and Barry are going to show you how to check the resistance. Um, first things first, they pull the cable out. Again, see that little tag? Remember the tag? Are we supposed to cut that off, tear that off, or throw it away? Um, that'd be no, we are not. The tag needs to stay on there. It has the readings for us. It tells us what the factory settings were with that or the factory readings were with that cable. I'm hooking up the two with alligator clamps. I'm hooking up a white wire and a black wire, and then I'm checking the meter. As long as it's 10% greater or 5% lesser within that window, we're good to go. Excellent, excellent. So now let's check the ground. So I leave one of the cables connected, I put it on there, I should have an OL on my meter, an open line, so the ground's not faulted out. Let's check the other side, shall we? Make sure everything is good to go. Perfect, I get another OL on the reading. We are good to go so far. So the next thing I wanna check that should be coming up is, I wanna check the temperature probe. This comes from the thermometer into the floor, and this helps us read the temperature in the floor. I want to make the adjustment on my multimeter, 
and then I want to put that on there. I believe it needs to be between 8 and 12 ohms. Okay, I got 10 ohms. That's right down the middle between 8 and 12. We're crushing it. That's a home run right here. So everything that I'm getting ready to put in before I put it in is being tested and written down before, during, and after the installation. And the next thing is we take our trusty sensor, we hook up the wires, and we leave this hooked up and on during the whole installation of the wire onto the floor and then of us putting tile on top and all of that. And if we have a problem, it will alert us right then and there, not later on after we go ahead and give it to the customer and try to turn the system on and it doesn't go on. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.